morning, family. So great to see you here on this beautiful day. You know, we're approaching the end of the NBA season, and there's two teams that are vying for the championship. Both have incredible offensive players. But do you know one of the most important parts of basketball is the rebound? You know, we're uh, both teams have some good shooters, but do they have good rebounders? You know, a rebound happens when someone shoots the ball at the basket and they miss. It's a response to a missed shot. Might call it a mistake, a failure, a shortcoming, or maybe even a loss. You know, every year in the message, I share with you three life principles. I tell the story about when I was playing basketball in school and I got uh, a loose ball and I drove toward the open basket, but it was the wrong one. It was the opponent's basket. And I tell that story how I shot the ball, the gym was going wild, my coach was screaming at me, my dad was screaming at me, and I thought they were cheering me on. They were saying, stop, you idiot. And, uh, but I missed the shot, but I got the rebound. And I dribbled just as hard back to the other end of the gym. But what if I hadn't gotten a rebound? What if I had just sat down on the floor and started crying? What if I'd run out the end of the gym and through the doors and down the gravel road home and quit school and joined the French Foreign Legion? What would have happened if the other point guard, who was right behind me, got the rebound and put in the basket? We only won the game by two points. It could have changed the game if I hadn't got the rebound. But you know, since that time, I've gotten a lot of rebounds because I've missed a lot more shots in my life. How about you? Have you ever missed it? Ever missed something in life? Because a rebound really is a response to something that we've missed. We've missed our goal. We're short of our goal. We've all missed some shots in life, and we've all been short of our goal from time to time. And that's why rebounding is so important in our lives. Let me tell you about a few famous people who, who had to rebound in their lives. Some of you growing up in, uh, in my age bracket, you always watch the show, I Love Lucy. Have you ever watched that show? Did you know that Lucille Ball was an actress, a comedian, a producer? She was nominated for 13 Primetime Emmy Awards, winning five times. She was a recipient of several other accolades, including the Cecil D. B. DeMille Award. Did you know she has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? But did you know that she was dismissed? She was kicked out of drama school and told that she was wasting her time trying to become an actress. The Beatles, and don't say, who's that? The Beatles were an English rock band formed in Liverpool in 1960. They were regarded as the most influential band of all time. They sold over 600 million albums worldwide, more than any other band or single individual, second only or above the next one down, number two, is Elvis Presley. But did you know that on January the 1st, 1962, they auditioned for Decca Records in London, England, and they were rejected. The label rejected them, and here's what they told them. They said, we don't like your sound, and guitar bands are on their way out. What a brilliant observation. <laughs> Michael Jordan played 15 seasons in the NBA, winning six NBA championships, six NBA Finals MVPs, five-time NBA Most Valuable Player, 14-time NBA All-Star, and the list goes on. He has a net worth as of today of $1.7 billion. But did you know that he was cut from his high school basketball team, went home, locked himself in his room, and cried? Thomas Edison was an inventor and businessman. He gave us uh, electric power generation, the incandescent light bulb, mass communication, sound recording, and even motion pictures. But did you know that in school, one of his teachers told him that he was too stupid to learn anything and that he should go into a field where he might succeed because of his pleasant personality? Walt Disney was an animator, film producer, and entrepreneur. He was the pioneer of the, in the animation industry and created cartoon characters like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and you know the rest. He's perhaps known as the world man around the world with the greatest imagination ever. The Walt Disney Company's net worth, depending on what report you read currently, is about $148 billion. But did you know, 
In his early years, Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper because this is what they said. He lacked imagination and had no original ideas. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was born in LaRue County, Kentucky. I know that Illinois likes to say they're the land of Lincoln, but he was born in Kentucky. He became the 16th president of the United States and led this country during one of the most challenging times in our history, the Civil War. He is known as one of the greatest presidents America ever had. But did you know that when he was young, his fiance died? He failed in business twice. He had a nervous breakdown, and he lost eight elections before becoming the president of the United States. Now, what do all these people have in common? They had a setback. They had a failure. They had a disappointment. They had a missed shot. But they also all got the rebound. See, famous people are not the only ones who have to rebound. All of us here today are faced with failure from some degree or another in our lives. If you've never failed, you've really never lived. You know, along with the risk comes disappointment sometimes and sometimes failures. And one of the greatest lessons you can teach your children is how to rebound. Because there are times when they're not going to make the team. They're not going to get chosen for that. They're not going to get what they want. And we all need to learn in our lives how to respond when we don't get what we want in life. How to respond according to the Word of God, but how life and God wants us to respond. Without a doubt, anyone who has achieved much of anything has had to deal with failure along the way. Many of the songs that were sung in church throughout the decades that, that were recognized as great hymns of the church were birthed out of heartbreaking situations. One of those was written by Charles Weigel. He spent most of his life as an itinerant evangelist and gospel writer. One day after returning home from evangelistic crusade, he found a note there in his house from his wife. The note said that she had enough of being an evangelist wife. She didn't want to live that life anymore. She was leaving him. They took her, they, she took their little boy and they left. He became so despondent and he even thought of taking his own life. But one day he sat down at the piano and he penned these words of this song and God restored his broken heart. I would like to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. And darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. I can't imagine what the world would be like today without that beautiful song. And yet it came out of a broken, heartache time, a missed shot, a failure by someone else, by the way. You know, sometimes in our lives, it's the actions of other people around us that cause us the most pain in life. Maybe we're doing everything we know to do right and doing everything right, but yet someone close to us does something, they miss a shot, and we still are forced to get the rebound. Fanny Crosby was a mission worker, a poet, a lyricist, and a composer. She was a prolific hymnist. She wrote over 8,000 hymns and gospel songs with more than 100 million copies printed. 100 million copies printed, and that was in the late 1800s. She was also blind. She never allowed her blindness to keep her from the rebound.
a lady who never saw anything out of her natural eyes, saw more than most people do in life out of her heart. Horatio Spafford was a successful attorney and real estate investor who lost a fortune in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Around the same time, his four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. Thinking that a vacation would do his family some good, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he took care of some pressing business. However, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship they were on had a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of his precious daughters. His wife, Anna, survived the tragedy, and upon arriving in England, she sent him a telegram to her husband that began, Saved alone. What shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England, and when the ship passed where his daughters had died, Horatio stood on the deck of the ship and looking over the waters. His heart was breaking. As he stood there, words of comfort and hope filled his heart and his mind. He wrote them down, and they have since become one of the greatest songs of hope in the church and in world. You feel like God has forsaken you from time to time? Do you think he only works through special people? That he only answers some people's prayers? If you do, you're wrong. If you want to be a rebounder, there are some fundamental things that you must know and do in life. First of all, you must position yourself for the rebound. The person who gets the rebound is the one in the right position. How do you position yourself for a rebound? Well, first of all, you've got to realize that there's a missed shot or the missed shot of one of your teammates. Sometimes we have to rebound because someone else's missed shots or mistakes. I call this facing reality. One of the things that we have to do in life from time to time is we just have to face reality. It is what it is, and we can't change it. We can't live in, a, in an era of our own reality and create a false sense of reality around us. The pain is real. The heartbreak is real. The miss is real. The failure is real. And we have to deal with the consequences. We may not want to. We may not feel like it. It may hurt. It's pain. It's real. But we have to deal with it. And we have to recognize the situation that we have a missed shot. Whether we missed it ourselves, it's really it's taking personal responsibility. Or someone else around us has, has missed the shot. You may be sitting here today because of a, a failed marriage situation because someone else missed the shot. Maybe you're sitting here as a child today as a child of, of a divorce, divorce situation where you didn't do anything wrong, but you feel like you did it all wrong. You didn't. But you have to go on. The pain is there. The heartbreak is there. It's a reality. But, but you have to realize there's a missed shot. And no matter who missed it, you've got to get the rebound. You've got to move forward. You've got to accept reality of what's going on. You've got to look up and not down. Don't get down on yourself. Turn to somebody say he's talking about you right now. Don't get down on yourself. Psalm 121.2 says this, my help comes from the Lord. Say that with me. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You know, if he made heaven and earth, how do you believe he can help us rebound? 
Psalm 121, 8, a few verses later says, the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Secondly, focus on the rebound, not the miss. Don't live your life in what was, but live your life in what it can be. See, if you spend your life, all your energy focused on the missed shot, you'll not be able to rebound. The other day, Thursday, when we were rehearsing this here in, in our church sanctuary, we were going through the first part of it and, and with the lights and everything and the introduction with Pastor Mark and us coming in with the basketballs. And uh, after we'd gone through it once, I said, let's do it again. Everybody take their position. And my position was over here on the right. And I started down these steps right over here, these one, two, three, four, five, six steps. And about halfway down, they turned all the lights out because the lights have to go dark and then they come back up again. Well, not thinking as I was stalking down the steps, I stepped on, on one and I thought my foot was secure, but when I picked this leg up, my ankle twist and I fell all the way down and fell on the floor there. All the people ran around. Pastor Mark began to yell, turn the lights on, turn the lights on. <laughs> and my first thing out of my mouth was I broke my ankle. Because it sounded like you popped all of your knuckles in your hands at one time. It just cracked so loud. And I laid there in excruciating pain, and all the staff came around. And finally, after a few moments, they picked me up and set me in a chair. And then they were saying, you got to go to the emergency room. you got to go to the emergency room. you got to go to the emergency room. I was not going to the emergency room. <laughs> then my daughter came in and says, well, you're going because I called the big guns in. I said, who? He's, you're my mama. I said, bring me a microphone and another chair. And I propped my foot up on the other chair. And I said, okay, let's get her positions and we're going to go through it again. And we went through it two or three more times and got everything except I didn't come in bouncing a basketball. I was kind of sick and lightheaded because of the pain. But we went through it another two or three times and I wanted to make sure everything was right for today. And I said, okay, I'll go somewhere now. And I went to an urgent care that had an x-ray machine and, and uh, instead of going to the emergency room. And uh, they x-rayed it, and it was severe strain. It was torn, whatever, but no broken bones. The doctor said, I can put you in a big boot if you want to, and you can put it on and see how it feels. If you don't like it, you don't have to wear it. I put it on. I didn't like it, so I didn't wear it. <laughs> and I hobbled out of there that day, and, and I'm here this morning. That's the reason I didn't run up on the platform, and I didn't do those. You see... Life is about, I didn't intend to have that illustrated sermon within an illustrated sermon. <laughs> See, you've got to decide in your life what you're going to do. You're going to lay there on the floor and cry and moan and groan, or you're going to get up and have the rebound. And you can get up and blame this and blame that, but you've got to focus on the rebound, not the miss. See, if you spend your life and your energy on that, you'll never get the rebound. Philippians 3.13, Paul writes, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Not only do we have to position ourselves and we have to focus on the rebound, not on the miss, you've got to block out. You say, what is that? Well, when I played basketball, my coach taught me how to block out for a rebound. At one time, they nicknamed me the hammer because I would literally hurt people, blocking them out for their rebound. I wasn't real big, so I had to give it all I, all I had as a, as a point guard. But that's when you get in between the other player and the goal so you can get the rebound. And so you block out, and you use every part of your body to do that, and you keep them out of the way. Now, this is a technique where you get between the opponent and the goal. You have to block out in our lives when, when you have a missed shot, when you miss it, when, when you're short of your goal. You have to block out the negative, discouraging words from others and those that come from yourself. You have to block out your own self-condemnation. You have to block out the lies of the devil. The first thing you got to do is block out the words of others that tell them, well, of course you missed it because that's who you are. You can't ever do anything right anyway. You can't shoot. You need to quit. You don't need to try again. You don't need to do this anymore in your life. Why don't you do something else? You'll never do that. I'm glad Lucille Ball didn't walk away one day and said, I'll get a job at McDonald's, which didn't exist at that time. I I'm glad she continued on. And even the Beatles. <clears throat> 
the mop top guys that came in in the 60s when I was in school and, and changed uh, rock and roll and all of that and all of their songs of those early years. I, I'm, I'm glad that Thomas Edison didn't go, quit because his teacher called him he was stupid. We may be still in here, sitting in here with candles today. I don't know. I'm glad for God for the imagination of Walt Disney. Not what it's become, but what he had and what he represented. Thank God for Abraham Lincoln, a man who gave his life, who signed the Emancipation Declaration. Thank God for people like that who didn't give up, who didn't quit because they got knocked down. You've got to block out your own self-condemnation. If you ever stood in the mirror and say, you know, you're stupid like I've done before, you've got to stop that. You've got to quit that. You have to cast down those vain imaginations just like the ones that come from the enemy. The vain imaginations don't just come from the devil. They come from our own imagination as well. You've got to cast those down and quit calling yourself negative names and quit speaking negativity over your life. You've got to position yourself for the rebound, not to be left there without it. You've got to block out the lies of the devil too. Let me tell you, if, you, if the enemy's speaking to you, he's lying because he's the father of lies. Don't you believe the lies of the devil? God doesn't love you. Yes, he does. God doesn't care about you. Yes, he does. God's forgotten about you. No, he hasn't. God won't answer your prayer. Yes, he will. God has bad things for you. No, he doesn't. He has good things for you. See, everything the enemy tells you, you need to tell him back. You counter back with the word of the Most High God. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes the Father above in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turn. God is a good God. The devil is a bad devil. Can somebody say amen? amen. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. Here's the last thing. Not only do we have to, we have to position ourselves. We, we have to focus on the rebound and not the miss. We have to block out. But then there's one more thing. Everybody shout jump you got to jump to get the rebound. Now, sometimes when you position yourself for the rebound, you, you focus on and you're blocking out, the ball will fall right in your hands. But most of the time, you've got to do one more thing. You've got to jump up and grab the ball. You've got, I was going to jump up and grab the ball at this time, but I'm not. You've got to jump up and grab the ball. Don't just stand there flat-footed. Well, if the Lord wants me to be blessed, I'll be blessed. If he wants me to be healed, I'll be healed. If he wants me to prosper, I'll flat-footed. I'll prosper. If he wants me to forgive somebody, he, he, he'll make it happen. No, 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 no. You got to jump. Everybody shout jump. I, I know we always don't get everything we want and things don't turn out the way we want to, but it's not going to be because I'm not jumping. I'm not going to sit flat-footed and say, well, whatever the Lord wants, that's what will happen. Bless my heart. I'm going to sit here on my couch, eat my potato chips, just waiting on Jesus to cause these calories to fall off my body. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, Jesus, I, I'm going to sit here and... Draw my check. I'm not going to work. I'm not going to put my application. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just waiting on God to bless me. I'm just waiting on God to bless me. God bless me. Amen. How many more people can I make mad this morning? Let me see. <laughs> you see, you've got to jump. You've got to put forth effort. Don't just stand there flat-footed. Jump. Go for it. Get up and go again. Don't let a missed shot keep you from getting the rebound and taking another shot. 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Are you getting anything today? Do you need a rebound? Maybe you're watching right now one of our media outlets or you're sitting right here eye to eye with me. And you say, yeah, pastor, I've done that. Thank you for reminding me. I'm a rebounder. I've gotten rebounds in my life. I've done it. I've rebounded. I, I'm, I'm, I'm where I am today because I got the rebound. But you might be sitting here right now you may be standing flat-footed. Or like Michael Jordan, you may be in your room with the door locked and you're crying because the pain is so much. And you've prayed, and you've prayed, and you've prayed, but you still hurt, and you still ache, and you still ache. Like Charles Weigel did, and he wrote, no one ever cared for me like Jesus He'd never had that revelation if he'd never gone through that rebound. 
You may say, nobody's given me a break. Nobody's given me a leg up. I've got a handicap. I've got a disappointment. I've got a thing in life that's holding me back. But like Fanny Crosby, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Or perhaps like Horatio Spafford, who not only lost a fortune, who not only lost a son, who not only lost four daughters, he stands out on the bow of that ship in the middle of that sea. He says, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. You see, if you'd come to the piano, please. When we face difficulties in life, we all have missed shots. You know why? Because we take shots. And that's okay. The other night in the NBA championship, the first game in the fourth quarter, one team hit nine out of 12 three-point shots. And they overcame a 12-point uh, deficiency there and, and won the ball game. But that's not normal. 40, 45% of three-point shots made is considered really good. <laughs> you know, when baseball players get up and bat, if they hit three out of ten times, they get multi-million dollar contracts. I wish they'd give me a shot at it. I might get lucky. I mean, three out of ten times, if I could get lucky enough to get three out of multi-million dollar contracts to be right, to hit the shot 30% of the time. I've often wondered if I get 30% of my sermons right, I wonder how long I'd be a pastor. <laughs> Probably not long. I'd be in some other area of business right now. But this is the point I want you to understand. You may have gone through some bitter circumstances. You may be missing the mark maybe almost every day. You may be in a difficult situation but what some other people have done. You may say, well, it was my parents that did this or it was my brother that did this or my teammate or my co-worker or, or whatever it may be that cause of what they did. I'm in the situation that I'm in right now. And that might be true. But today, right now, you're ready for a rebound. You're ready to rebound from your missed shot. I don't know of many other things I could say this morning if this little illustrated sermon, but I know that if you can't rebound in life, stay away from the edge of that thing. If you can't rebound in life, you'll get stuck in failure all the time. I don't know about you, but I've had to get a lot of rebounds in my life. I've missed the shot so many times, but I've learned that if I'll get up and go after the rebound, that God will take my missed shot and make something good out of it, and he'll help me and learn from the future. The same is true in your life today.